thought we'd have a really quick two-minute talk about ima the imaginary number i. And what that really helps us do is this. We end up with these questions that cannot be answered. For example, what's the square root of negative 25? And if you think about it carefully, you know, I've had students say, well, it's, it's negative 5, positive 5. Well, those aren't the same numbers. So if you want a square root of something, it has to be a number times itself. They say, well, well it must be 5. Well, 5 times 5 is equal to positive 25. So that clearly isn't the answer to this, isn't it? Because we're looking for negative 25. And then really good students will say, well, of course, then it must be negative 5 times negative 5. But again, negative times a negative is a positive. 5 times 5 is 25. It doesn't work, does it? So here, the truth of this is that this has no real solutions. So we'll start there. It has no real solutions, but it does have an imaginary solution. And the way that I would do that is this. We know that there's this product property of, of radicals. That is to say that the square root of A times the square root of B is exactly the same as the square root of A times B. So I'm going to break this, th this thing out here and say that same thing. We'll say, you know what? Square root of negative 25 is the same as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25. Now, hopefully, we have an answer here. The square root of 25 is 5, isn't it? Here's where the imaginary number starts to come into play because what we've done is said, you know what, let's redefine this and let's let i equal the square root of negative 1. So our answer here is 5i, plus or minus 5i. How would you do a problem like this? A similar problem would be square root of negative 18. Well, first off, no real solutions, right? So no real solutions. And from there, we'd start p picking this thing apart and say, you know what? I'm going to pull out this negative 1. And I'm going to try to factor this and ask ourselves, does 18 have any factors that are perfect squares? And it does, right? It has 9. And we have to make sure we get it all. So 9 times 2. And just tr check our math backwards. 2 times 9 is 18. 18 times negative 1 is negative 18. So that's... That works. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of negative 1 is i. And the square root of 2, frankly, this is a square root of 2. So we have to just add a plus or minus to the front there. And here's our answer. All right? I hope this video is helpful. Um, I'd love to hear your comments on it. This is one of the things we really have to understand. So good luck.